And do you want me to say in Kurdish? So is it I'm katted bash? I'm katted bash. We'll do that part when I when I cue in with I'm katted bash Taban Khan. Then you'll just respond. We'll do a couple of sentences in Kurdish just because. Oh, I know, but like, wait, don't put me on the spot. I only speak Kurdish with my mum. <laughs> really? No, I'm really surprised. Kudi dazanam. Kudi kambasha. Oh, your whole lady's coming out now. Yes. There we go. That's the problem. I'm like, don't be bringing no dialects into this. Because my Kurdish yeah. is a Zalata. <laughs> Do you know this in itself is a brilliant clip? Oh, really? The little 30 <laughs> seconds that me and you just had. No, yani, Sorani Ksa, okay, Taban. No, Balam. Kurdin Basha. Kurdi Ksa da Kam, Kurdi Tedagam. Bes. Lashash Sali or Lerba. So, yeah, my Kurdish is. Um, so it takes a little bit from Sili, it takes a little bit from Holir, it takes a little bit from Duhok, it takes a little bit from Koya, Kerk, I don't, all of them. All of your experiences. But I don't even understand that I, I don't know that I'm doing it because I, I just speak it how I've always spoken it. Oh, okay. So but you mix up my, all the different... Dialects. Words. Yeah, nice. Everyone. I, do, I just, I don't know that I'm doing it though. That's the problem. So my dialect is... It doesn't have an origin. It's completely mixed. So there's a little bit of holiri. It's a Taban dialect. It's that's it. It's Tinglish. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I love it. It's um it really is. But that's most probably why you won't really catch me speaking Kurdish. I can speak Kurdish. I speak Kurdish at home with my family. On that note, Taban, I'm Katad Bash. I'm Katad Bashter. Zor Spas. Wosh Bispas. Thank you for making time to do this. What's probably going to be an amazing podcast, I have no doubt, in all honesty. Thank you. You I'm have really a great story to tell. And more importantly for me, it's a brilliant Kurdish story. So this was my leading message to you. If you remember, I said, Taban, us Kurds are underrepresented. Yeah. So it's a great deal for me to have someone on you like here that I can share with my audience, which is over 90% non-Kurdish. Yeah, yeah. Look at who I have here making a difference in the world. Oh, with thank her. you. There's, uh, mate, embrace it. Thank you. I really You've do. just begun. That's the crazy thing. I, I, I genuinely believe that Kurds just need to unite. Like, honestly, we, we all need to kind of get together and really support each other and have each other's backs for me especially like especially with the lotus flower i try and encourage as much men to be involved in it as possible i try and support kurdish businesses kurdish women like for me it's a really really big thing it's it's my kind of my way of giving back to the community so the lotus flower does center around empowering and saving women from struggles and struggles like war um abusive marriages a lack of education but your emphasis to get the men involved that's more of a cultural shift isn't it you want to see a society that collectively helps women progress and not just women helping women progress yeah am i right in that so i i kind of say yes i think for me every society not just kurdish society um we need to see women and girls being able to thrive feel safe have opportunities to do the best that they can i think for me because i'm kurdish and my kurdish background i'm very passionate about supporting um my motherland basically and that entails everyone right i have a son i've got a 21 year old son if I don't really think about including the men and boys, then where does that kind of leave the future generation? So for me, it's really important to include men and boys in supporting women and girls. Now, I understand your point wholeheartedly because I, unfortunately, my parents did actually divorce and I'm predominantly been raised by my mother. 
So I've probably got a different upbringing from a Kurdish perspective and my views on women than a typical one. Uh, for good or for worse, that's not what, he, what we're here to discuss. But I'm emphasizing with your point. I think these days society is quite divided. And if you go too deeply into this um, rabbit hole of social media, you'll start thinking we all just hate each other. When the truth is one can't really exist without the other, like even our instincts. Yeah, I think I think you definitely need a community to support each other. And for me, like I try and bring my son up in a way where he's very connected with his emotions. He's very em- empathetic. He's very sensitive. I'd say lots of things that we kind of grow up trying to tell boys not to be. But for me, it's very important. And I think that there are so many great men and boys in our region. We just need to kind of show them or provide ways and show them how they can support and how they can help. I mean, the Lotus Flower, it's a 50-50 gender split. We've got so many amazing men working in our organization and they're genuinely passionately working there it's not just like it's a job everyone's really really committed to the cause and i think they're a great example of how men can be supporting women and girls but the overall goal is to get more men involved in in more than just a way of working for men yeah. to understand that the way they speak, behave and represent themselves around women has a big impact on them. Massively, massively. And I think for me, it starts from a young age. So that's why I'm keen to kind of work from with boys as they're developing those ideas about um, how they see women and girls in our culture. And I think it's really important for us to start at quite a young age and kind of include them and start bringing them in to the change. I think it's a collective thing. You can't do it in isolation. No, you can't. You definitely can't. And if it isn't collective and society or as a culture, we don't spread the same message, then you get mixed signals and it goes through one ear and out the other Yeah, because you don't know where to hear it from. But in your case, as a mother to, to a child, mm. to a fully grown adult son now, mm he would have heard these stories for years and it would be embedded in him and he's acting more the way you want rather than let's say a typical person from the culture yeah yeah yes he's 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 i'd say he does but also at that age so much um influenced by outside factors i can't control it's got, it's got i've got no control over that so for me with a boys and men that we work with, it's more like how can we be that outside control that makes them have some sort of... I mean, I've got examples of some projects which were, I'd say, quite innovative, but also very inclusive and understanding of the culture. And that one is a positive masculinity project. Now, trying to implement that in our region, I'm, I saw the, yeah, the, the look on your eye. It's quite hard, but I know that a lot of the men and boys that we were working with are quite religious. It doesn't matter which religion, so it could be Yazidi, it could be uh, Muslim, it could could be Christian, any religion, but they do look up to the religion and the religious leaders. So what we did was we actually got the religious leaders involved. So we went to them and uh, so we had one from the Yazidi community, we had one um, from Sunni, so we had a mullah, Um, we had someone from the Christian community, so a priest, and we asked them questions. We asked them questions around, you know, gender-based violence. Are men allowed to hit women? Like, does it say that in the Holy Book? Are they allowed to be educated? Are they entitled to an education? Are they entitled to, like, being treated fairly when we asked them those questions we they had to answer according to their scripture and you found that actually a lot of the scriptures were quite supportive of women 
But a lot of men, not just in our society, in many societies, use religion as a scapegoat. And so for me, it was important, like before every positive masculinity project, where we had a male trainer to run the sessions, we would play that video. So there was no things around, oh, it's because it's in the, it's in the religion. So there'd be no scapegoating of the religion. So we've kind of cut that off from the start. And as that project progressed, they actually asked for mental health support. And this is where our men and boys trauma project was born out. So the men eventually said, no, we need mental health support. We're almost taking it out on our partners or our family members. So from that, the men and boys trauma project was born. And when we gave them mental health support, we actually saw a reduction of gender-based violence within that community that we were targeting and working with. It's all, it all goes hand in hand.